Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Today is episode 27 of your NHL 22 franchise mode here with the Edmonton Oilers as we're walking into another big episode here. As we're walking into the 2026 trade deadline, as we're looking to massively improve this team and well, go on a very deep playoff run with this team hopefully this year. But before we get into all that, I'd like to just say if you are new to the channel, make sure to smash that subscribe button and hit that like button as well. So let's get right into this puppy. So now in the last episode, I left it up to you guys on who we should really go after. Uh, of course, there wasn't a whole lot of guys to, to really go after for the Edmonton Oilers, like, at all. Um, the guy that we did want to trade away, though, is Kevin Fiala. Ooh, Jordan Everly did drop down. Maybe we make a move to, to improve our depth as well. Anyways, um, Kevin Fiala, we're looking to trade him away. He was not producing the way that we wanted him to produce. He's been all right for the team. He's been all right. I think he's been, you know, not bad of a player, kind of what we expected. He's been really good defensively. I do give him that. But you look, you look at other years, he's never been a big point producer, and, uh... I uh, he also skipped a ton of years, too. He didn't play tons of hockey because I think he was an RFA, wanted a ton of money, never really got it. And, and I mean, with the way that he's been playing this year, he's only going to get about 50 to about what he got in New York. And I want a guy that's going to be able to produce 30 goals for us. And that's what we're almost going to get out of Oliver Bjork Shrine this year. And honestly, if we can trade away Fiola for a rental and then just re sign Bjork Shrine when, you know, free agency comes around. Already, he's not asking for a lot of money. You know, of course, it's definitely going to be definitely a jump because we only have $2 million. But he wants $6.9 million. And it also depends because, I mean, we got to re-sign all of our depth. Like, our entire depth needs to be re-signed. And not just that, we're going to have to hand, you know. Ooh, hang on. We could get Holloway for dirt cheap right now? Yes. Yes, 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 yes. I, I think we do this right now. I'm popping out my wheel to side. I think we do this right now. We get Holloway on a two-year deal. We uh, lock him up to an $8 million deal. Um, I don't care if we just have to pay him for another two years because that just gives us enough time to kind of uh, give us enough breathing room to really make us a good team. So um, let's spin the wheel on Dylan Holloway because he's an unrestricted free agent with this one as well. Um, so we'll pay him $8.35 million. And he does not want anything. He doesn't want a no trade clause, doesn't want a no movement. So I will take that without a doubt. Let's go, boys. Let's take him. So $8.35 million for Dylan Holloway. Sign him. Get him locked up for two years. Not a crazy contract, but we want to get him signed back onto the team because he's kind of putting us into a situation where after the two years, we're going to have to pay him major money. And uh, I think I will. Holloway's been a great player for the team. I don't think you want to lose a player like Holloway. So let's get on to trade deadline, baby. Let's see what's available. Let's make some big moves. Why not? Oh, he decided to reject our contract. Okay. All right. All right, I guess we're going to have to sign him again. Sign him to about the same deal that we did last time. So, oh my god. Oh my fuck. I think we know what we need to do here, boys. I think we know. Well, I, 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 I think we know what we need to do here, man. I think we know what we need to to do and that is make a massive massive blockbuster move right here man i'll be willing to trade away mar so if we can get kaprizov to be retained at least a little bit so we're not having to eat that full nine million dollar cap that is actually because he's a rental so we give him back fiala so that gives them a playing player and then they can just flip them if they wanted to a first and mar and uh i kind of feel bad maybe we just give him instead of that i know we don't want to lose mcmammon because he's a future player yeah i kind of want to keep mcmammon i really do i want to keep mcmammon and him so yeah mar i will sacrifice him i'll trade him away and we'll give him a future goalie as well because that's what they're kind of looking at they really don't want a first round pick from us so we'll give them all players that they do want and then we don't want yeah, they don't have a lot, a lot of picks that we could steal back from those. So we'll take a third and a fourth of next year. And uh, let's see if we can just get a bunch more money retained here. And uh, we'll see how far. Because if we can make some money available 
especially for us going and trading for another depth piece. So 4.5. So they get Fiala, Mar, and Enroth. So they do get some players. And Brennan Mar is going to be an instant impact on the team. And I feel like Brennan Mar will be a really good player. So Kaprizov, a third and a fourth. Will that go through? No, it does not. Okay. Will this go through? Okay, yeah. So we definitely need to add a lot more. So I will be willing to add on a first round pick of next year. I'll be willing to add on fucking picks upon picks upon picks, to be quite honest with you. To just get Kaprizov, I will be happy donating picks to you guys to get Kaprizov here. Will that go through? Yes, it does. I don't care if we ended up on the uh, short end of the stick. We get Kareel fucking Kaprizov, baby. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. That is fucking mental. This roster is insane, man. Oh, baby. Fuck yeah, let's go, baby. Kareel, the fucking real deal Kaprizov is on the Edmonton fucking Oilers, boys. We're giving him a fucking Stanley Cup, baby. Let's go. Let's do this, man. All right, now we need to pick up a depth piece. I don't care. Let's trade away this whole prospect system of this team, man. Let's pick up a good depth player for this team. Alex Tuck. Ooh, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is he a third liner? Please say he's a fucking third liner. Please say he's a third. Let's go. Yes, Tuck. Alex Tuck. I want you on the team. I don't care about anybody else. I want Tuck. Um, we'll give you... Uh, yeah, we trade away one of our rookie goaltenders already. We don't want to do that. Oh my god, we really don't get a lot of players to really trade here. Uh, so we could throw uh, Nevikov away. And then a third of this year. And a second of next year. Like I said, man, we're going all in this year. I want to win a cup this year, man. It's the cat that's going to hurt us, though. Um, we could trade back somebody. Instead of Novikov. Who do you guys want? Who do you guys want? Uh, McClough, we can't trade away. Yeah, they don't want a whole lot of our cap off of our team. Do we really have any players that we could trade off for cap-wise to make this deal go through? Lawton, we want to keep. Palat, Donskoy, we want to keep. Bjorkstrand, Stetcher. Stetcher. Oh, there we go. Miles Wood. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Okay. Um... And then, of course, like I said, the third and a second for a fourth as well. If we could get Tuck to be retained a little bit too, that would be nice. So we're not stuck in cap hell and we're having to deal with a ton of crap. So there we go. So Miles Wood, a third and a second for Alex Tuck and a fourth. Will that go through? No, it does not. He's a rental, so we're not trying to trade away a whole of a crap ton here. Um, it is quite close to fair value, so if we could do that and then maybe get some picks, like a two-fourths maybe, will that go through? Still a no, just a fourth, will that go through? There we go. Alex Tuck is now officially an Edmonton Oilers, so, I mean, you're talking about going all in, boys. We just picked up Alex Tuck and Kareel fucking Kaprizov, and uh, we just continue making smart moves. We pick up Kevin Fiala. He goes right back to Minnesota where he originally was from. Uh, originally where he popped off. And we just made two of the biggest moves that I think can benefit this team massively. Um, wow, man. I am in disbelief of what what I just did there. Because now this team has Kirill Kaprizov on it. Shea Theodore heads off to St. Louis for a ton of picks and Ryan O'Reilly. I think that's it for big deals. Let's go, baby. Fuck yeah, man. I am pumped, baby. I am so pumped. Oh my god, dude. All the way up to that top line. Oh. 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 Yeah, baby. Oh, baby. Yeah, let's do Caprice of along. I mean, Bjorkstrand has been really good alongside of McDavid. Um... Instead of Newell, we throw Donskoy in because Donskoy we definitely need in instead. And then we could do Donskoy, McLeod, who Everly is not going to do too well there. No, yeah, we're going to have to throw Tuck. I want to keep Everly, Lawton, and Plot anyways the same. Oh my god, we have Kaprizov. Oh my god, on our. Oh my god. 
I don't even know how to explain this team, boys. I really don't. Um, I, I really don't. I, I think we have just made one of the most overpowered teams I think we have ever made in a video game before. I don't think I've ever made this strong of a team. I played a lot of franchise mode, and I have never been able to really be... I mean, I made teams like this before, but this... I, I Guys, I this team is just uh, unworldly insane. Unworldly insane, man. Be our shrine up there. Instead of talk, we will throw in... I think Nuge, right? Is missing? Yeah, Nuge. I'd rather have Nuge. Right, he's on a he's a center. Nuge. Get him on in there. I'll take a minus two, I don't care. McLeod, Holloway, Zadorov, I think we yeah, just keep the PK lines the same. Instead of Lawton or no. No 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 no. Uh yeah, we throw Lawton up to the top and then you throw Nuge in on here because we want him on the PK. Yeah, and then we keep that the same. So let's go, boys. Let's simulate the rest of the year. I I'm ready to get into the playoffs, man. I'm pumped to get into the playoffs, man. Like, I am fully ready to go for some playoff action already. Like, I, I want to be recording a video right now while I'm recording this video to get into the playoffs. So let's simulate it up to the end of the year. We have Kaprizov onto the team, man. That is, I, I, I can say that multiple times, and I'm still in disbelief that Kaprizov was even available and uh, wasn't that expensive to pick him up either. That was the thing. And I mean, he's a rental, right? So we, we're not even going to really have him for next year. We might have overpaid in that fact, but I don't care. I'll take Fiala or uh, Kaprizov over Fiala any day of the week, man. One of the best, like, without a doubt. What, what do we trade for Fiala? Like a few picks or something like that we didn't trade a tremendous amount from and already right off the get-go three goals in three games for Kirill Kaprizov in an Edmonton Oilers uniform we're, we're in la la land right now we're in dreamland to have McDavid Drysaddle Holloway and Kaprizov all on the same team uh, what if you were to tell me that you know to begin this all off that I was gonna have those four guys on the exact same team, all at the same time, I would tell you to go fuck yourself. That is insane that we have this type of team right now, man. Really is. This team is insane. We could actually hit 60 wins on the year. That is actual bonkers that we might actually win 60 games this year. We only need six more. We lose our, those two there, Pittsburgh. I mean, we got we got the games. Yeah, I don't think we're going to win it. We're just starting to lose. We're starting to fall back a little bit here. I mean, understandable. I think the games are starting to give us a little bit of a, uh, a decrease. Because, I mean, we're popping off right now, man. This team is insane. 56 wins. Yeah, we're, we're going to be close to 60, but a little too far away. Strain hamstring for Zadorov. That's unfortunate. That's okay, though. We got a good defensive core to back him up. And a great team, so... Not too worried about it. Oh, we just wall up the flames in the last game. We take a top of the division and we win the President's Trophy. Insane of a season for the Edmonton Oilers this year. Let's see who we're going to be going up against in the first round. A playoff action. And it will be the Dallas Stars. Well, this is an old rivalry from years back. From like the 2000s where uh, Edmonton Oilers and Dallas Stars faced up against each other in the playoffs. They always seem to beat us, but hopefully, uh, you know, we can reverse that and actually be the team that is the more dominant. But, you know, this year is insane for us. The 362 goals for our goals against was probably one of the best in the league. Our power play was quite well with 19.5 and our PK. I mean, unwords, just unwordly insane. Uh, McDavid being second place in all time goal scoring for the Edmonton Oilers is just insane as well. As he has now 1,053 points. I don't even know how to explain McDavid Holloway as well. Just had an insane year. 54 goals. He just continues to grow and grow every single year. Leon Drysettle with 86 points on the year. Nuge. Bjorkshan did really well. Kareel, the real deal. Kaprizov had 21 points in 19 games in another's uniform. Uh, it's just awesome. Lawton, Palat, uh, Tuck as well. Uh, he was another trade deadline acquisition. Nine points in 19 games on the fourth line. 
Wow, man. Wow, wow, wow. Bouchard, Nurse, Uyghur, Stetcher, Garakovo, Zadorov. Our entire defense decor was insane this year. Goal tending wise, Soros with 41 wins on the year, a 921 save percentage. He, I, I bet he's pumped up and ready to go for this playoff run, man, because I am. I am definitely pumped up and ready to go for this playoff run. And I can see UC Soros honestly winning the Vesna this year. Again, um, I could really see that. What a steal of a deal that we got for Soros, honestly. Signed him at $5.95 million. And, and what a keep. Uh, that was a great idea for us to keep UC Soros on this team. Absolutely amazing. Locke, most likely. Either that or Nuge because of his uh, plus and minus being up higher than everyone else. But Billy Nuge might win the uh, call to this year. McKinney with a fat 106 points on the year. It was just absolutely insane. Uh, and in goals... Uh, Gregory Cross will win the Maurice Richard Holloway and Kutrow for two goals away um, from getting up there with Gregory Cross. So just unwordly insane, boys. That really was just insane of a year. And now we're going to be going up against the Dallas Stars in the first round of playoff action. And honestly, this one is going to be a very fun playoff run. I hope it will be. But we're going to be going up against... The Dallas Stars to get everything, you know, begun off. So the first time we got Rope Hints, Randy Bannister, who was the first round pick back in 2024. Uh, he's in his second year in the NHL and is looking like an insane goal scorer. And then you got Tom Wilson. The second line, you got Jason Robertson, Evgeny Malkin, and Andrew Mangiapane, who's now with the Dallas Stars after leaving Calgary. Very nice. And then you got Kubalik. Uh, Wyatt Johnston and uh, JT Comfort, and then Ivan Barbashev, Tyler Sagan, and Valeri Nukushkin. This is a very deep offensive team, kind of like what we have. And then defensively, Mira Heskinainen, Sean Walker, Cameron Karate, Ali Mata, Mikey Anderson, and Ben Hutton. You got Mira Heskinainen, but the rest of the defense core is very meh, very mid. And then Jake Oninger. As the starting goaltender there for the Dallas Stars. Who's been alright. Definitely not fantastic. But has been alright. And then Semyon Varlamov is the backup goalie. For the Dallas Stars. But you know we went up against these types of teams before. But they have beaten us. And I think going into this year. This playoff run is we're not underestimating anyone. And we got to go out there playing our best game. Every single game. And that's what I'm going to praise these boys in the locker room. Go out there. Play like every game is your last and, and go out there and let's win this fucking cup. We cannot just let, you know, thinking that we're amazing. We can't just let teams walk all over us because it's not going to be easy. I think we have a great locker room with what we got right now. And we got some great players that we added onto this roster to go for a deep playoff run. So let's do our boys. Let's go for it. But for now, guys, I'm going to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you guys all in the next video. Adios. Amigos.